let's talk about what comes in the box. You're going to get a manual. You're going to get a silicone uh, cover for the camera, which is nice uh, for protecting it. You get a lithium ion rechargeable battery uh, that has a micro USB uh, port plug for charging this at home. If you need to take it out of the camera, you can charge it right there with this little white cord. You can plug it into your computer or something like that and charge this battery. Uh, uh, you know to top it off before you put it in there for the first time you use it uh, and then the solar panel will keep it recharged from there forward and then uh, you have a strap here if you want to use the strap you're going to have to um, use these slits right here slide the strap through that and then mount this to the back of this the, all the hardware is included to do that and then um, this port right there screws on to the swivel uh, adjustable base and then you'll be ready to go for that and then over here we have the solar panel and the mounting uh, base for that. This is an adjustable quarter inch uh, bolt there with the threads to receive it on the back of that. Nice and sturdy looking with all the mounting hardware. All right, so before we get into the three simple steps to set this camera up, let me tell you just a little bit about it. This is the Reolink Go Plus camera. It's a 4G video feed camera that runs on the AT&T and T-Mobile network. Now my farm has low signal on those networks but my current cell cams that i have run on that network so they do pretty darn good so i think i'm going to be okay with this camera but this camera is pretty cool it has two-way audio feed so you can talk through it and hear through it which is kind of neat if you're using it for security purposes um, the other thing is is you'll notice that you know this uh, base and everything is is just not really set up for hunters now it comes with a camo skin but you got to paint the base, which is no big deal. But for me, and planning on using this to move around, I'm going to create some mobile additions to this that's going to make this a lot easier for me to, to move around. And I have some ideas in mind. So stick around to the end of the video uh, to see my creation for what I'm going to do for both the solar panel and for this and making it really easy to move around. So with that being said, let's get started in the three simple steps to get this up and running. So step one is you're going to need a SIM card. So there's a lot of confusion around SIM cards for these types of cameras. So let me just try to simplify this real quick. All right, there's a lot of companies. We all know them. Um, they sell all kinds of plans, text, talk, data, text and talk, data and text. There's all kinds of plans. You don't need any of that. You need data. That's all you need. And the technical term behind what we're doing, just so you understand, is called IoT data, Internet of Things. And what does that mean? That is the term for devices on the Internet that talk to each other without any human intervention. So, for example, you got a security camera, camera made by Reolink. It records a video. It sends it over to the, the app system. The app system notifies me that I've got a new video. And all of that happened automatically without me doing anything um, behind the scenes, that's device to device data transfer. That's called Internet of Things data transfer. So simply put, you can go on Google, you can look up IoT data. I found a company, they're called eiotclub.com. Kind of a mouthful. But I found them um, reading some reviews on real link cameras that they work really well with real link cameras because they already have the APN settings uh, dialed in with the real link uh, brand of cameras without going into technical aspects of that. What it basically means is that when you plug one of these cards into a real link camera, the real link camera goes, oh yeah, I know that card and it recognizes it and the camera's up and running in no time. So simply put, you need a pure data plan um, that works with the camera system that you're using. Um, which has already been proven with this company. Now this company, I am not paid by them. I'm not an affiliate. I don't get paid any money. Actually, I had to go on Amazon and buy two of these um, just like you're going to have to do. And the reason I bought two is because I'm going to put one in this camera and then the second one I'm going to try in one of my uh, cell cameras to see if it uh, uh, will function in my cell cameras and I may switch over to this company for all of my cell cameras. Um, but simply put, this comes with five, uh, I'm sorry, 300 megabytes of data when you get it from Amazon, okay? And then basically when you open this pack up, you're gonna have some instructions, it's real simple. It's right here 
um, it tells you in three steps what you need to do. You need to go to the uh, website. Once you get to the website, you're going to take the uh, SIM card number. You're going to enter it into the website. Once you do that, you're then going to pick one of their data plans, a month plan, a six month plan, a year plan, whatever you want that fits your needs. You pick the plan, you pay for it, you go from there and you're up and running in no time. The nice thing is, is that the amount of data that this comes with uh, allows you the opportunity to make sure it's going to work in your camera before you go buy a plan. So that's that simply all you need is a pure data plan made for these types of cameras and you will be good to go. So now let's move on to step number two. All right, so step number two is pretty simple. So basically what we're going to do is take the camera apart and we're going to activate it by putting the SIM card inside of it. But before we do that, let me tell you a little bit about this SIM card. When you pop this out, this is made for like four different sizes on this SIM card. So I pop that out, but then it breaks down um, even one size smaller than that. So you pop it and you break it down even again and you take that ring off and now you're down to the really, really small, it looks like a micro SD card. So that little SIM card is going to go right here on the left in this slot. Pretty straightforward, it slides in. Okay, I pushed it till it stopped. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the little SD card in here as well while I'm doing this. It doesn't say that you have to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. There's a nice little click there. So that's installed, that's ready to go. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the battery and you're going to install it and then we're going to start looking for the color codes that it's actually connected. So we're going to put the battery in, snap it in, then we're going to lock the base back on. And then we should see colors. It's going to be red and then it's going to go blue flashing, then blue solid, and then the blue is going to go off. There's the blue. The blue is going to blink and then it's going to go solid and it's probably going to go off here shortly but um, back to the instructions the connection succeeded. there we go the connection succeeded the light went off and uh, we are ready to move on to step number three all right so so far so good we're moving on to step number three so now we're going to download the app onto our phone and we're going to connect to the camera so what you're going to need is your iphone obviously or whatever phone you have and then in the instructions you're going to see the qr code right there that you're going to need to take a picture of and it'll take you to the website so we're going to do that now or to the app actually so basically i'm going to put my phone up there you're going to see that website pop up I'm going to click on it app there we go and then I am going to download it and then I'm going to open it I'm just going to click yes to everything on here because it's about notifications I'm sure terms of service I agree okay so now we have to um, connect to the device okay so what it says to connect to the devices this is the home screen it says add device up here a little plus sign so we're going to click that real link would like to access the camera okay now it's saying um, to take a picture of the qr code on the camera where to go on the camera there's a little code right there so we're going to take a picture of that see if that's what it's looking for i think so Yes, it is. It's connecting now. It's connecting to your device. Then it says, all right, I got to create a password. Let me just do that real quick. We should be able to name your device. I'm just going to put uh, farm cam initialization finished. And then I'm going to hit finish. guys it's pretty cool we're live on the camera let me get that in front of you can you see that um i got the camera in this hand my phone in this hand and i'm pointing it at me now but uh 
as I move it around it moves on my phone so that's pretty cool it's nice to be able to tap into your camera and check out your hunting property or your office or whatever you want to do with this thing um, the neat thing about it too is I can talk but if it, it's going there's going to probably be a lot of feedback so let me show you if I can talk through the camera um, it's probably going to be crazy amount of feedback that's the camera that's the camera talking <laughs> told you there'd be a lot of feedback all right so let me turn that off um, and then I want to show you something you can go to settings um, yep there we go all right so there so there's my uh, camera there's my battery level 98 percent and here's all your uh, PIR motion sensing settings here um, all your recording settings email alerts and all that so I've got to go in here and fill all this out but for the remaining part of this video we're going to get into making adapters that make this very portable and easy to move around without having to bring screws and screwdrivers and that kind of thing for those of you who want it to be more mobile all right guys so as I looked at the uh, mounts that I had to work with here I thought about an idea of using some pipe to, to go in these holes to make some adapters so starting with this solar panel mount nice big hole in there I thought that a three-quarter inch piece of EMT would work perfectly and sure enough it goes in there and if you push it a little bit and twist it it's in there really tight and you have to snap it back out that's going to be plenty tight for holding it onto a tree I'm not worried about that at all I'm going to cut that off then I'm going to take a stick of half inch EMT I'm going to cut this in half and make two handles out of it I'm going to use one of the handles to stick to, to weld onto that and then um, on the back side of the handle I'm going to put uh, this is a 5 16th diameter uh, inch and a half long lag bolt I use these a lot for my trail camera mounts and all that. These go into trees really easy. You can go up to a 3 8 but the 3 8 is really hard to get started into a tree. So I'm going to weld this to the back of the handle so that I can just screw it into the tree real quick and then just slide this up on it, lock it in, and then I'm done. So now the other mount's a little bit harder because this one has a shallow hole that I really can't get much depth into. So I'm going to stick that in there like that and then I'm going to have to create like a little jumper um, going across that I can screw these uh, these you use screws to go into the metal on the holes you'll see what I'm talking about uh, into the handle because I don't think this is not going to hold it and I wouldn't be comfortable leaving this like that so just not deep enough uh, so anyway the same thing I'm going to put a lag bolt on it screw it into a tree and then I'll easily be able to mount this stuff so let's get to uh, building this and see what we come up with. All right, that's what I'm talking about right there. This handle here is going to slide up onto that, lock on it, and then I'll be able to twist this handle here into the tree using the uh, lag bolt there. Here is my short one for the white one that'll go up on there like that. Uh, screw it into the tree put this on there like that I, then I'm gonna have to put my bolt through it okay just one other quick thing before I paint it I just decided to go ahead and fix this and I just wanted to show it to you real quick so this is the camera that screws onto this part of the mount so I would basically disconnect that separate it and what I did is you can see I put two galvanized screws in there and you can see where they come through under there and go into the pipe so uh, it's real sturdy now I don't know if you can see that but now it goes right into the pipe but uh, we're going to get them primed up now and camo them make them look good all right so i put a nice coat of satin gray on all of the pieces and here i'm uh, painting the hood as well it's plastic it's just basically a one quart paint pail from home depot that you cut in half easily with a pair of scissors and then your next goal will be to come back over the top of everything and just add your second color i chose black um, just to add some different spots on all of the different pieces before we add our third color uh, which I don't actually show in here but it's actually going to be just a tinge of white um, on the different pieces 
uh, but you'll see it in the end. Now this next part is not necessary, but I like to do it. It's the sponge effect. And basically you can take any type of sponge. Um, I use like a, a, a rubber type sponge. You can use a car wash sponge. And you're basically going to create a pattern on it. Um, and then you're going to spray some of your paint, uh, like on a plastic, you know, paint board, and then just dab it. And then you're going to go around the edges of your uh, two-tone paint, and you're just going to dab it around. Now the colors, once it dries, it will blend in with the existing paint, and it looks really cool once it dries. But you're basically creating kind of just a rough border on the edges around the paint. And you'll see how this develops as we go along, because what you're going to do next is take the gray base color and go back over some of the black part with the uh, base gray, which we'll look at next. And I failed to mention, to create the sponge, all you need to do is take a pair of needle nose pliers and you basically just pluck out pieces and parts of the sponge uh, just to give it a random design. Uh, as you can see, uh, when you press down on it, it's just basically uh, just blobs, um, but there's not really consistency uh, to the pattern, which is kind of nice because it just looks pretty random. So now we're going to continue the same process except for we're going to use the gray on top of the black now. So basically you're just going to wet your sponge and go around and put random spots on top of the black. It's kind of nice to go right inside the border lines of the black that you just did uh, because it'll add some, you know, really randomness uh, to the uh, to the blotches and just gives it a cool look, I think. You can see in the background that I already completed the hood and the camera itself and once they dry it blends in with everything and looks very uh, smooth. Now the third color will be your lightest color and I chose to use white. Now you can use a combination of any three colors that you want in the browns family or, or whatever. I kind of like the black and gray um, actually with the white added to it because it really uh, blends in well on oak trees. This uh, color pattern um, blends in really well both on oak trees and surprisingly on pine trees as well. If you look at a pine tree bark and you study it really closely, it has like a gray silvery sheen to it uh, that allows it to uh, kind of blend into that as well. Um, I have a cell cam that's kind of painted in this now and it's up about eight feet or actually about 10 feet on a pine tree and I don't think anybody's ever seen it up there because it is so camoed it really looks good from the ground uh, but you want to use this light color like this white very sparingly you don't want to put too much on it um, it's really just to give it contrast and once you put this up you're going to be surprised at really how well it breaks up and blends in uh, to its surroundings so uh, go very sparingly on it and then after this I like to put two coats of matte clear coat just for a protective finish uh, this particular brand I really like I get it at, at advanced auto parts which is close to me you can probably get it at any auto parts store um, but it pr gives a really hard finish it's actually made for car rims but i've just had a lot of success using it on things that i put out in the weather all right so we're all done the clear coat is dried we're ready to put it out and i just wanted to tell you that i'm not going to be using the silicone skin uh, camo skin just because i've got a lid on here i like using lids on my cameras uh, it gives it a little bit of sunshade for when the sun's coming down. Also, it gives you some really good video during uh, rainy days. Uh, and so I like using a lid like that. So since I have the lid on there, I don't really need the pr pr protection of the skin. Uh, but it is nice to have the skin on there because of that seam right there, just to protect it, to keep any kind of water from getting in there. But that does have a nice seal on it, so it should be fine. So I'm going to go put this out and uh, see what kind of video footage I get from uh, the woods next to my house here. This will not be video from the farm. Uh, and I don't even know if I'll get any video other than my dogs running circles in the woods because they love those woods over there. Um, but I'm gonna set it up and then I'm going to probably do a part two video of uh, video up at the farm. So stay tuned for that. But just to kind of give you some sense of how this camera works in the woods maybe, I'll set it up here and see what we can come up with. So stay tuned.